Well, mindfulness has a long history. Uh, there were people who used that term long before psychotherapy got going in various parts of the world. It was part of the system in India about mindfulness was tied in with meditation. And in that quietness, you're just observing your thoughts and becoming quieter and so on. And they discovered, and now we have a lot of research that shows that meditation does produce tremendous reduction of stress and so on. But just like we found that thoughts, you know, create a lot of negative things, we can also be aware of learning how to create more positive thoughts that we harbor and picture more positive images. We could be mindful of the thoughts that make me a little bit disturbed or a lot disturbed. We could be mindful of thoughts that make me happy. We can be thought mindful of thoughts that would create stress, which creates, contributes to 80 to 90 percent of all symptoms. But if I'm mindful about what my thoughts are and realizing that I'm not a powerless victim of those thoughts, we all mostly think that they're running us and we don't have any control. But what we can learn, and you know, especially if we use some of the neurotherapy modalities to clear out some of the programs that automatically go in the opposite direction to steer the negative thoughts. But if we can learn tools that we can use to become more conscious of the ones and how they're affecting this outcome versus that outcome, the positive outcome versus the negative outcome, or by people being nasty to us or people being friendly toward us. It's not just things happening to us, but we're all attracting things from our world and our thoughts. And most of us don't recognize that. But as we can recognize which thoughts we want to keep and what they're attracting, we can have a choice about it. And we can use mindfulness as a, an approach to become more conscious about it, to take back our own power of being in charge of our thoughts. And then we're in charge of our world more because we're not separate from the world we see because we've all given our interpretation to everything we see. Everybody gives their interpretation to whatever it is. It might be just simply as one t-shirt or it might be a, a picture, it might be a car, but everybody gives their meaningfulness to that. And that, that way we are creating our world because that meaning we give, we emanate it and people react to it from their world. And so we just need to learn how to emanate the thoughts with the energy that's connected with them so that we can be in charge of how our whole life is going. Whether it's our relationships, whether it's our happiness and health, whether it's our success and work, whatever it might be. But now we know we have that possibility. Certainly, if you'd like to learn more about these methods or these tools or the combinations of them and how they work, I'll be glad to talk with you about it. You could contact me by phone or by email, or you could call me and we can make an appointment or two, and we could discuss it more in relation to your area, your issues, your problem areas, and what would be effective for you to do together. So I'd be happy to explore those things with you. I have a uh, people who want to come in person can see me in New York City or in Westport, Connecticut. Um, others may prefer to have a session by Zoom or telephone or FaceTime or things like that. So that's possible too, especially during this coronavirus situation. So whatever works for you, is uh, I'm open to, to explore with you. And I'd be glad to answer any questions you might have about what this therapy is like.